Hello ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to be installing new mirrored closet doors into my nine-year-old's bedroom. She will actually be turning 10 this November, so one of her requests a few months ago was to have new closet doors, so I've been saving that project for her birthday. can expect to spend about $240 purchasing this kit here. Uh, they do have some kits that are around $140, but I believe the difference is these ones are made of a little bit better quality and also they have ball bearing rollers, so it'll open and close more smoothly. All right, so I brought the mirrors in along with all the hardware and it is about 24 degrees outside. I opened up the packaging out there and carried each piece in individually. And my next step will be to inspect the instructions. So I have all of the hardware and railings removed, including the doors. Now we are going to compare all of the new tracks and hardware. And you can see here with the doors, they are crystal clear. They do have small edge here just to make it look a little bit better also I want the white molding so that it will always be neutral to any color my child decides to paint her room so um, the one uh, thing I noticed was the old track and the new track are not the same size the new track is just over three inches in width so the header may have to be adjusted and same with the bottom the bottom is um, similar in width. It looks like it's just under three inches and I'll have to make some adjustments for that as well. So we'll go ahead and start lining things up and I will start placing this header. I measured my rough opening for the upper rail and it was 70 and a half inches. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this and then I'm going to cut it. Uh, typically when cutting something like this, you'll want to use a miter box and then hacksaw. In my case, I'm going to use um, a different tool to cut this. Uh, I usually use a Sawzall or sometimes I'll use it's a Dremel Multi-Max tool to cut things like this. I do recommend before doing these cuts that you have safety glasses and ear protection. A lot of times you'll want to use uh, gloves when working with any kind of metal. There you have it, there are both of my cuts. I have not cleaned them off yet. Uh, this one was a lot trickier than I expected. Um, I did imagine this being the toughest part of the whole job was cutting just the metal. I just wanted to show you here uh, the difference between the new track and the old track. This in my hand is our old track. The wheels for the closet door actually sit in this track right here and slide back and forth. And this track actually takes a lot of weight. So the doors are pulling down on this track the entire time that they're hung. So our new track here, if you look up here, there's nothing that wheels hook onto or anything like that. The doors just specifically sit in between there. There is something touching on each side of the door. And so there will be no play, no movement. The doors aren't just gonna accidentally come out. So I'll show you down at the actual door itself. These are the guides that sit inside those channels. It has a little plastic clip on one side, and then it just sits in there without having any play or anything, and it should move very freely. You have your top rail and track uh, cut. You'll wanna take it and dry fit it to make sure it's going to fit where you need it to fit. Um, then the directions show that you want to have it flush mount to that exterior wall here. So you'd want it to sit basically like just right on this edge. Um, in, in my case, I am not going to put the track on that edge. I'm actually gonna put the track up there. It won't be visible. I believe the reason they want this flush mount is because by doing it flush mount, it's easier to get the doors in for one. And another is this particular door came with a trim piece that runs across the top of that railing right there. I will not be using that trim piece for this project. 
um, mainly because I don't want to cut away the closet door um, the header piece. So I'm going to leave it like that and we're going to go from there. So when lining up your upper railing, you will want to use a eighth inch bit to pre-drill your holes. Uh, you can actually take your railing, line it up if you're by yourself, and then use a pencil and just fill in the hole where you're gonna do your pre-drilling. All right, so I'm gonna take this, have my pencil, I'm gonna set it up in there. All right, so now we are going to use our eighth inch drill bit and we are going to pre-drill all of the holes that we just marked. Right, so now I'm going to run my screws in. I'll just put a couple in on that first. So here we go. The next step is to install the lower track. In order to do this, you definitely should follow the instructions that came with the doors that were provided for you. Um, and this particular door, you wanna take the track and you wanna measure three eighths back from the face of the wall. So three eighths inch back, and then you would place it three eighths back. And you would come over here and you would mark each side of this centerpiece. And then you would do the same thing to the other end of this track here. Once you have done that, you can lift this out of the way, line your piece of wood up in between your two marks, and you can nail it down. Uh, nails should have been provided. Um, if you have tile or concrete, the process is a little different and it'll have the specifications in your instructions to secure that down properly. Uh, it is not recommended to put these tracks over carpet, so um, definitely pay attention to the details when looking to mount this so you don't run into any future problems. I have installed my lower piece of trim that I can secure my track onto. So now I'm gonna go ahead and set that in position and screw that down. So when you are ready to install the doors, you will come in at an angle like this, put the top in first, and you'll come over to the bottom, line the track up here, and there's an adjustment screw on the back side there. You want to turn that clockwise uh, to, until the top of the door is in the track there. So you'll turn that until you can get the door to not wiggle. And then you will want to adjust the screws until this is parallel to the wall. Once you have that done, you are good to go. Just a key note on this is whenever doing a do-it-yourself project, it does not always go to plan. Uh, I've done these doors in about an hour and a half to two hours. This one actually took me about three and a half hours and it was fine. Um, all the adjustments were easily made, but it was a little bit more time consuming with a couple modifications. So don't be discouraged if you run into any issues or anything like that. Everything can be adjusted and fixed or repaired. If you have any questions or need any kind of assistance with the doors, please feel free to comment below and I am happy to respond quickly. Well, I hope you all are as pleased as I am with how well this turned out. It looks amazing. The doors open and close extremely smooth. Super pleased with that. And I can't wait for my daughter to see it. Thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to like and subscribe and have a great day.